Well, hello there, and welcome to part one of my uh, entry to the uh, new challenge, the Use What You've Got Lockdown 2020 challenge that uh, some of the guys from the uh, Great Guitar Build Off have put together, and I'm delighted to be part of this. Now, then, my idea is to recreate this guitar, which is the second guitar I ever built and something I'm quite proud of. It's a semi-acoustic using this feather edge. Now I know from making uh, the roof of a bird table from this stuff is that when you plane it down you get a nice grain so my hope is that if I can somehow put some of this together to create the body and perhaps even the neck or part of the neck um, I can create a, a nice looking guitar and the aim of this is to create something that looks nice not that looks like it is a fence even though I'm making it out of a fence anyway so the first thing I'm going to do is get the shape of my semi-acoustic guitar now this guitar was actually inspired by uh, a piece of beach that I bought which was very wide and very bowed and um, I thought well because it's bowed it would lend itself to make the body of a hollow guitar so what I did was I, I cut some off made some off cuts and then filled in the side using those off cuts and I'm going to use the same sort of technique again uh, with this other, this new guitar. Now, um, my wife Carolyn, who's a really good designer, came up with this design. It's, it's beautiful. I, I do do love this one. And so I'm going to um, trace round the body. I never actually drew it up on the computer. This one. So I'm going to trace round it and make myself a template to work from. So let's get on with that. Okay, I think I've got something. I think I've got enough there. Fair enough. There we go. Got something to work on there. I need to find a piece of wood to make a template out of. I think this piece of OSB is probably going to do the job. Okay. Now the reason I'm making myself a template is so that I can first of all adjust any of the shape that I want to, to do for this new guitar uh, and B I can then mark out the centre line and get all the positions for the bridge and the pickups etc marked out and it will give me a great guide as I work through this and I'll need to do that when I start putting that uh, feather edge together to know the exact sizes that I need. Now because this is going to be primarily an acoustic guitar I want to make the body a little bit bigger to give a bit more um, resonance to the sound so what I've done I've just extended the bottom out there uh, and just extended the top um, I'm trying not to uh, to interfere too much with the shape I can always refine this as I go but I think I'm going to cut that shape out and then, uh, then have a look at it.
Okay, I'm going to try and get a centre line on this now. Let's have a look. So let's go for the widest part of the body there, which is 37 and a half. Oh, this will be good. Uh, get your calculator, Dave. Get your calculator. Absolutely hopeless, hopeless at maths. Right, here we go. So let's try again. 37.5. 375 divided by 2 equals 1875. 1875. Of course, the only problem with using OSB as a template is it's a bit rough on the surface there. Perhaps I should have used the other side, but hey. Um, we'll, we'll make do with what we've got. I've got my um, neck pocket routing template here that I use for the travel guitars and um, I'm going to use the same technique here so I'm going to attempt to uh, bolt this neck on with a roof bolt. Now then, um, so if I line that up pretty much in the centre there and see if we've got a mark. I've got no centre line through the middle. Now there's a bit by eye this is so I'm going to put that there and mark what I think is the centre there draw this line through let's see what we've got it's gonna go there so basically my uh, the, the neck pocket should end at fret 21 and fret 20 fret 22 should just uh, lie over it so and that's about there so I think that should be okay place there Right, I'm going to cut that out. in there. Beautiful. Now then, I want to sort out the position of the bridge. These two uh, bridges were given to me by a lovely lady called Barbara who I used to work with and uh, this is actually um, 95 pence is on there. I think there were a lot more money than that now. Anyway, um, so I'm not sure which colour to use yet. I'll have to decide that nearer the time. Um, but I want to be able to just mark up where I think it's going to have to fit. And interestingly, of course, this may create me some problems actually, because this is an acoustic guitar bridge, which has um, the strings spaced much more widely. And I'm thinking that I might have to attach the strings somewhere back here and then run them over that bridge the alternative bridge that I found, given that this is making a guitar out of things you've got, is one of these. Problem with this is I can't really use the piezo pickup under this because it sits above the the body. So that's not going to be easy to do. I'm going to go with this type of bridge, and I've got to make something to uh, hold the strings. Anyway, let's get the uh, position of the bridge. I'll just done a mark for the right scale length which is the uh, Strat scale length which is um, 648 so I'm just going to draw a line there so this is the rough position of the bridge and that will go there somewhere like that by the way I just found what I think is going to be the fretboard yeah well, we'll see. Okay, I've sorted my feather edge into two um, lengths, two different lengths of wood. So these are the longest ones, and these I'm going to use to make the top and the bottom of the guitar. My idea is to create some slabs, for want of a better word, which are going to be like this. 
and I might need some more bits. I think I've got some outside, that's not a problem. Something like that. Now, in order to be able to do this, these are wedge shape and I need them flat. So I'm gonna to have to run them through the thicknesser to flatten them off. Do you know what? Sometimes machines aren't the ideal tool. This has got completely clogged up my uh, homemade cyclone with all the uh, cuttings from those feather edge boards. So I'm going to have to empty this more regularly. Oh well. Here we go. On a moderately positive note, I know that. Anything that the uh, vacuum sucks up is going in my homemade cyclone here. So, hey, if you want to see how I built it, go and have a look at my videos. All right, just empty all this. Let's start back with the machining. Of course, when you get a problem like this, it sometimes makes you rethink your approach. And I think planing these down is probably not going to be the right answer. But I wonder if I could bandsaw them down. Now there's a thought. Now I've just brought these over to the bandsaw. And I apologise for the noise in the background. It's the air cleaner trying to clean out some of the dust. Now, there's something blindingly obvious. And that is, these are all tapered. But if you put two together, they're no longer tapered. So why am I bothering to try and flatten these all off when all I need to do is stick two together. Okay so we're on to plan C and that's going to involve me sanding the surface off these sheets, get rid of all the dirt and the muck that's on there because they've been stored outside. But I thought I'd quickly show you um, the planed ones that I did just to show you the, the sort of lovely grain you get in this feather edge board which is obviously hidden behind all of those fences that we see but some really lovely colors knots and all sorts in it so yeah i think we're on to a winner just got to find out the best way of doing it so let's see what we can do with this basically the idea is to put one on top of the other but slightly offset it so that when I put the next one on it creates uh, a better join between the two that's the idea I need to work out how to clamp all this lot up uh, I found this uh, piece of uh, well it was a temporary shelf actually made from a bit of um, gravel board funnily enough that we used on our washing machine anyway um, so all I need to do now is reconstruct this on there I'm going to glue as I go let's go an interesting glue up. I'm going to leave it here to cure overnight and we'll see what we've got. Anyway, Ooh, is that gonna... <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit more glue on that and then leave that to cure a bit longer. Oh well, I think it's going to work once it's on the body. But there we go. Okay, so while um, I've got that uh, body blank uh, drying over there, I think I'm going to have a go at the neck. Now I've got this piece of Aris rail, which in itself is not a very attractive piece of wood. 
I thought I might slice this into three and put some of this feather edge in basically to sort of bring the changes a bit and uh, give it a bit of strength well that's the idea never actually considered making a neck out of a piece of uh, Aris rail before I'll be perfectly honest with you so um, this piece does look long enough I've got uh, an, a neck that I've just uh, I've been working on so it, it's yeah it's going to be long enough so that's that's reasonable so um, what I'm going to do is mark a centre line on it there we go I'm going to work on the assumption I'm going for a, a, a width of 60 okay so now I want to mark where I'm going to put the uh, feather edge inserts I'm going to cut this lengthways and insert those strips and I think I'm going to look at doing it 10 mil each side of the center line there when I run these through the thicknesser in order to do that I need to raise them up a bit and stick them onto this board I think I need some double sided tape for these sort of things. To try and get hold of some. Now when I'm using this thickness I do tend to bring it down slowly because I don't want to take too much off at any one time. Okay, glow up time. Put a few more clamps on it. I've got glue using all those joints so uh, I'm going to set it aside and leave it overnight to dry okay so I've got the top of the body gluing together and uh, hopefully that's curing I've got to leave it a bit longer but now I want to concentrate on what's going to hold the top and the bottom together with the hollow bit in the middle and uh, for that I need more of this feather edge might be enough. My plan is quite simple and that is to glue together a whole wadge of these feather edge pieces right, that will extend the whole length of the guitar and then once they're all glued together what I'm going to do and I might do this before I glue them together to save a bit of glue but effectively I'm going to cut them in half uh, because what I'm going to do then is once I've got a big block of this glued together I shall slice it down the middle and that will form the two sides of the guitar I'm then going to cut out the shape of the guitar so that I end up with a effectively a wall of this material all round the outside with obviously a much thicker bit here where the neck fits in. That's the theory. I've just got to stick a shed load of these pieces together. Okay, I think I'm going to cut them in half first. So let's just find out what I should cut them to. Look, if I cut it to 24, if I cut these pieces to 24, that's going to be plenty big enough for me to do what I want with them. Okay, 
Now for such a mammoth glue up I'm going to need a special clamp. So that's what I'm making now. This whole pack together. I've got some another piece on the end there and I've just cut it a bit short so I'm hoping that by the time I put some really long screws in there the whole lot's going to be pulled really tight together. I'm going to add a couple of clamps for good measure here. Oh, okay. I'm going to leave that as it is. Right, after that mammoth glue up and the glue up of the uh, top of the guitar and the neck, I'm going to call it a day for this video and I'm going to leave you all in suspense to see what happens when I take all these clamps off and hopefully this glue dries. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Now, don't forget, this is the uh, Use What You've Got Challenge 2020. So don't forget to go and have a look at all the other guys who are building guitars using what they've got. All the links to their sites are below in the description. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the little bell notification. And if you've got any comments, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, I'm going to leave you in suspense. I'll see you soon, though. Take care. Cheers.